back again. We're, we're getting near the end of our sessions. Uh, uh, Claire, I'm sorry to stick you at the end, but uh, maybe we did save the best for last. Uh, uh, Claire's from TCO. TCO is a uh, originally, I guess, a, a, or probably is currently a Swedish-based uh, nonprofit that has to do with uh, certifying products. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. TCO's background, uh, um, if you're old as I am, you remember back in the days when television sets and, and uh, monitors on desks were CRTs, uh, cathroid tubes is what a CRT was. And uh, I believe TCO got its, its, its foothold back then when people were claiming that these cathroid tubes that were sitting on your desk were emitting uh, rays that were affecting workers. And so uh, TCO got involved in, in, try, in trying to certify these products to make sure that they were worker friendly. Uh, it's evolved over the years. So TCO is now involved in you know, product sustainability and social responsibility and, and so forth. You'll hear all about it in a second. Uh, but we're really honored. By the way, my, my Lenovo laptop, when I turn it on every morning, as TCO's logo. So Claire, I, I think about you every morning when I turn on my laptop. So, uh, uh, but thanks for being with us today and uh, Claire, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I'm so glad I'm able to be with you every morning on your computer. That's um, <laughs> that's really fun. Um, hi, everyone. End of the day, uh, maybe we can zoom out a little bit on this topic of sustainability that has been pretty much in every conversation during the conference, which is fantastic really i think it's it's we're all seeing this boom in engagement around sustainability and clearly it's no longer an option um, so i thought what might be interesting today is to kind of take a little broader view about sustainability in the it product space um, as a certification our role is more upstream so we work with the, uh, the big it brands manufacturers but also with the end users the purchasers and really help them understand where their efforts are best spent and we'll, we'll take a little look at that during our, our chat today. So just for context, uh, as Joe mentioned, we've been around for a while. Uh, where We celebrated just on 30 years last year of uh, certification of IT hardware. Um, so we have a really robust set of criteria that covers environmental and supply chain social responsibility. So we're talking about ILO conventions, uh, forced labor, those kinds of issues. We have a system of independent verification, which I think is critically important in such a complex product category with such a widespread supply chain. So we have independent verification of all the products that we certify as well as in their factories. And that's an ongoing system. Um, We've got to remember with sustainability, as we know, that this is a journey. It's all about continuous improvement. We want to be finding action items in the factories. We want to be finding issues that need to be dealt with and constantly evolve the progress. And in doing so through a certification, it allows us to get that level of transparency and accountability for maintaining that compliance. We have around 3,000 plus certified models from about more than 20 brands right now. So you can go to TCO Certified and find them all on our product finder. So just for scoping, we deal with four main areas in our work at climate, circularity, responsibility in supply chains, and safer materials. And those are all really interconnected, as we know, and particularly when we start talking about ESG. So I think a lot of us would agree that sustainability is kind of at an inflection point right now. If you're anything like I am, my my LinkedIn feed every day is just blowing up with uh, sustainability initiatives, white papers, conferences, you name it, um, which is great. And, and it's lovely to see the ITADs getting so engaged in this, this topic as well. Um, why are we at this point? I think the climate crisis has become more and more evident with every day. We also know that e-waste is not reducing, it is in fact increasing, and it's gonna be almost doubled by 20, the early 2030. So that's particularly troubling. And particularly when we think about, you know, the idea of shredding new products or lightly used products. Um, I think the regulatory space is a critical point here, um, and, and particularly those of you in the EU, I know you're heavily involved in the a lot of the new disclosure rules coming up around supply chain, the green claims directive that's now on the table. Also in the US, we're looking at some, uh, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act has a bunch of new regulatory uh, concerns around um, sustainability. So regulations are helping drive a lot of the action. 
I think there's also a deeper understanding of how much of our sustainability impact, particularly on carbon, is embedded in the supply chain. And IT is no exception. And we'll, we'll look at that in a little, in a little minute. Um, but, you know, we've got a whole bunch of stakeholders that are starting to get their heads around this, either being driven by regulations or a feeling of corporate good citizenship. Um, they're, and they're wanting data, as we know. And, and data is a... It, we all want data. Um, but as I think I mentioned in an earlier panel today, data, it, it's this thirst we can't quite quench right now. There's no singular solution that gives us great data. The risk here is that we take our eye off the real ball, which is reducing emissions. From the end user perspective, we need to give them strategies that really push those emissions down, even if we can't measure perfectly yet. So as we like to say here in the United States, we need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. And finally, greenwash. And believe it or not, it's alive and well. And I think we need to be really mindful of the claims that we're making in the marketplace, whether we're a brand, an ITAD, or anywhere in between. We need to have some humility and some deep understanding that we are not at a sustainability point yet where we can claim, you know, no negative impact. So I think credibility, understanding what's real uh, is really important to our progress. So let's look at this idea of carbon emissions and what's happening in IT. We've done quite a bit of research in this space to understand where do we need to be targeting our efforts. And this is really interesting, right? We've got upwards of 80% of the lifetime emissions from a, a, an average notebook computer in the manufacturing phase. This is where we need to be targeting. But if we look at it from the end user perspective, so many of them are focused on the use phase, the idea of buying a new, more energy efficient product. Um, there's this widespread belief that that's gonna drive down emissions, but that's only around 13% of the lifetime emissions. So we really need to do a lot of education and a lot of myth busting here on where do we need to be targeting our effort? And our research also shows that if you focus as an end user on buying that more energy efficient product, the incremental improvements in energy efficiency, speed and the like are very small these days. Machines are widely, you know, they're pretty, pretty fast. They are fairly energy efficient. So we're not getting that in order to compensate for those lifetime emissions in the supply chain. The, the numbers are somewhere around, we have to use that new product for somewhere around 40 years. And I don't know about you, but I don't even know if I'm going to live that long to, to compensate for those emissions. So our conclusion is the best bet is to make get more life out of the product you already have. And when you're buying new products, yes, use a certification like TCO certified, but talk to your ITADs up front. How can we plan up front for extending the use of what we're already buying, because that's where the dialogue needs to happen. Plan, make this part of an emissions reduction strategy. Longer use, buy refurbished, plan on refurbishing your own product. So we have a little myth busting to do around this issue. Um, this, and this is the question we always get. The best approach to sustainability is to buy products that are more energy efficient, right? So we have to do a lot of re-education of the procurement community on this topic. Don't focus on the 13%. We've got to focus on the 80%. And then we get into the circular economy. And here we've also got some myth busting to do. Uh, a common question is, we send all our used I equipment, for, IT equipment for recycling, so we're helping to drive the circular economy, right? So here we've also got to educate them on recycling is not necessarily bad, but there are emissions associated with that. And are you sending equipment for recycling that still has some life and some embedded value in it? So we've created a very, very simple inverted pyramid of priorities here. Uh, and what this is how we try and re-educate the, the end user around this issue, that the best thing you can do is to use longer. And that can look like a number of different things. You can plan for a longer contracting period up front. You can work with ITADs to plan for refurbishment and the like. Um, redeployment. 
in your own organization is something we're seeing a lot of interest in. Can we do better at uh, doing an inventory of all our internal processes and redeploy used products in place in maybe a less um, processing intensive function in the organization? Modularity, the ability to replace critical components is also critically important here. We have a set of criteria to address that, but I think, again, re-educating how the end users think about that. And then, of course, recommending good refurbishment, remanufacturing, and of course, recycling as part of the approach, but to not start with recycling as the um, as the solution. And you'll notice that shredding is not here on this list at all. That's what we want to avoid. So you can go to our website. We've got a bunch of resources there. Feel free to search around. We've got um, a quick start uh, course, which is free and open source. You can share that in your organizations. It's called Sustainable IT for Beginners. We've got a full product uh, finder where you can search around by brand, model, product type, uh, we've got some guides for your end user customers, so feel free to search around. It's all open source, free to use, um, and you can always reach out to us with any questions. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and maybe back to you, Joe, and we can uh, we can chat a little bit. Sure, I'd, I'd love questions. to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. let me just stop sharing here. You're, you're, you're not sharing. You, you are sharing, but you're not sharing your slides anymore. Perfect. Sharing, sharing my face. Yes. Sharing your face and your knowledge, um, <laughs> um, of which there's a lot. Um, um, to you and TCO, I mean, a, a ton of knowledge. Um, you know, I, I encourage you guys to go to the TCO website. Uh, they have a pretty cool tool. Um, it, to me, uh, you know, to be candid, it's the shape of things to come. It's a start. It's not not the finish. Um, but you can type a product in, into the TCO website. Uh, it's called Product Finder. Is the name of the tool. Um, you type a product in there, and it, and it shows things about you know when it was manufactured, when it entered the market, um, kind of the kind of stuff that a manufacturer uh, would provide. Um, doesn't show CO2 savings yet, but but you know, Claire, I, I found something very fascinating that you said. You know, 80% of the CO2 emissions is caused when that when that product is is produced. Um, now, is that is that a pretty? I mean, is that a pretty firm fact? I mean, that that that's a number I think you could probably establish. Is that is that fair? It it is pretty firm. It, it it's confirmed, and in some products it's higher. Some products it's up towards ninety. Um, so, so, so is this is this fair logic? I can say to a customer, if you take if the the new uh, laptop uh, produces X CO two emissions when it's produced. Uh, if you you take that used laptop, I am saving you X. Is that is that logic? Yeah, I mean, whether we put hard data on it or not, but I think, yeah, we, we have some data around that. You know, if you extend your use phase from three to four or four to five years, um, I don't have that in my head, but I'm more than happy to provide those percentages to anyone who might be interested in kind of using this towards the end users to kind of, you know, wake up their awareness on how that even one more year of longer use really impacts those lifetime emissions. Um, and to your question really quickly, Joe, on, on carbon and, and data, um, I'll just say stay tuned. We'll have more to say on that. Uh, and I just want to point to, you know, we're all very fascinated by quantifying this, right? What is our scope three? What is our product carbon footprint? It's kind of like the golden goose for a lot of end users as well as all of us on the call today. It's in, it's notoriously difficult to get right. Um, there's a there's a few different methodologies out there. Industry's tested them all. We've tested a bunch of them. There's a lot of inaccuracy around them. Um, that's why there's we've been quite deliberate in um, researching this before coming out with anything. A lot of the calculators out there today don't quite take the use phase into account. Um, and we also make sure need to make sure that we're taking into account the carbon intensity of the energy where the products are going to be used. So there's a few variables that we need to get into a calculation tool. Um, but um, stay tuned. We might have some more to say on that in the, in the coming weeks and months. Well, you know, on yesterday's program, we had uh, Kyle Weens from uh, iFixit. And he loves to rant and rave about uh, earbuds, uh, Apple earbuds, and how 
what they're doing to the environment every time because every one of them has a battery in it. Yeah, um, uh, I, I'd be really curious. I, I didn't see Apple earbuds on your website, but I'd really be curious to see what the carbon footprint is for an Apple earbud. Apple earbuds, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, you mentioned batteries. That's a really interesting case here you know and talk about talk about greenwashing right that, that we we found batteries particular was one topic that there was a lot of kind of declared battery cycle numbers going around around all kinds of products declaring you know that a computer could run up to 700 full battery cycles before it needed replacing we thought that was pretty amazing. So we went and tested it and came out to about 300. So <laughs> if, you, if you think about that from a uh, an end user budget perspective, you know, buying IT inventory, that's that that hits the money, right? Mm -hmm. That 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 really has a, a financial impact as well as a sustainability impact. So, um, you know, again, transparency, verification, getting proof of what the claims are. I think that's really what we need to all be mindful of is getting getting that independent verification in place. And, and, and that's what you guys are. I mean, you guys are the independent verifier because, I mean, you you, you, you kind of are in a, in a unique spot as far as our industry is concerned. Uh, you know, you yeah. talk to, to the dreaded manufacturers, you know, the, the, the brand holders. Those are the guys that we've been competing with for so many years. Um, but you talk to them, and they, um, um, Lenovo, I, I, I think, is a pretty, seems to be pretty open in a lot of ways. Uh, some of the information, at least it looks like the information they're providing to you is wide open. I wish some of these other brand holders would be open and share that information. We we talk to everybody, Joe. So we <laughs> we talk to all the brands. We talk to a bunch of uh, researchers. We talk to a lot of purchasers. Happy to you know, join the ITAD community on, on the periphery, at least. Um, and we're independent. So that's really important to know. We're not owned by industry. But at the same time, we need to make sure that the criteria we set are doable at scale. They're achievable, right? Um, so we need to we need to be mindful that we can set hugely ambitious criteria. But if it's not doable at scale right now, it doesn't have a lot of meaning. So, so our goal is to is to push industry uh, all the time, uh, make it challenging. We're not the easiest certification to get, but we also need to make sure that there's enough product available so that purchasers feel confident actually plugging this in and pushing sustainability because they are the business case for industry to do all of this, right? If we go to the back to the, the linear economy, IT industry got really good at making a whole bunch of great products, low cost and delivering them to us more frequently than maybe we should be having them. So we this is this is changing mindsets. This is changing business models. It's not going to happen overnight, but we're, it takes a village. So we all need to be focusing on that 80% doing it credibly and and focusing on those incremental improvements and then in the village you know that you mentioned you know, i mean it consists of iteds it consists of of of, of enterprise manufacturers and, and enterprises and i know you spend a lot of your time talking to the enterprises because uh, i guess those are the guys that really push the manufacturers the, the brand holders uh, yep they are how, how, how are those conversations? I mean, give, give me the, you know, you talk to ABC, I won't mention, ABC, not ABC television, but ABC Enterprise. Uh, yeah. Um, how do you, what do you, what do you say to them? What do you say to them? Yeah, so uh, we, we always ask you, what are you doing on, on you know, all these topics, everything from social responsibility through to energy efficiency, carbon. Um, they, the challenge for large enterprises, public or private, is the lack of insight into the supply chain. And I think what happens then is that because it's so complex, there's so many layers, they don't have insights, they don't have access to the manufacturing or the supply chain. So I think they kind of go back to relying on what industry declares to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's very, very common. Um, we know that because of the complexity of this category, there's a lot of shortcuts, there's a lot of workarounds, there's a lot of loopholes, right? And this is what our system is, is designed to kind of plug, if you will. Um, take something like working hours, right? It, I mean, places like the UK, Australia, we've got a big effort now on um, modern slavery, you know, ethical supply chains. Working hours in IT is a big challenge. 
right? If, if, if you say, well, um, the factories have to abide by local law for maximum working hours. Well, in China, that's 48 hours. We know that we've got hours way over 48 in a, in a bunch of different different uh, geographies. In the U.S., I think it's about 20 hours uh, a day. Right. We work right. pretty hard over here. Yeah, yeah. So so things like that are, you know, that's where you, you encourage large enterprises to don't reinvent the wheel. Use what's there because we're in there. And, and we're holding them accountable to things like the maximum 60 hour work week. So I think I would, what we also encourage purchasers to not do is to kind of get more ambitious and create their own criteria. A classic example of that is recycled plastic. It's a really, it's a favorite topic of a lot of purchasers. Like we, we want everything we buy to have 100% recycled plastic. Not knowing that from an industry perspective, that's really, really hard to do at scale. Getting that polymer, getting that quality of plastic at scale, at the you know performance level that needed, we're not there yet. So mm. if you go and ask for something different as a large enterprise, you're throwing off a whole production line. You're throwing off a whole bunch of efficiencies and creating potentially more emissions by mm. by you know shifting supply. So you know I think use what's out there. Um, it is a really you know add your voice to to an aggregated signal because we've got a very small bunch of suppliers delivering these products right multiple brands will work with the same suppliers so we have to give this aggregated signal into the supply base mm-hmm. yeah i'll tell you, you know I, I find it funny not funny interesting you use the, you know when you talk to enterprises you say you know they listen to industry um I wouldn't use that word. I mean, because industry to me, you know, ITADs are part of the industry. Um, uh, you know, they, they listen to manufacturers. They listen to brand holders. Listen to the brands. Yes. You know, the, the brands, they don't listen to us that much. Um, you know, the brands say, don't worry about it. In three years, we'll take it back. We'll, we'll, we'll you know, we'll get you a new one. Um, and, and that's what they hear. And they don't hear, you know, what the environmental impact is when they, when they agree to that deal. That's true, and 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 I, I kind of don't want to throw brands under the bus here. Um, there's a there's they're a, your customers, <laughs> not for that, but not for that reason. The um, <laughs> the reason I say that is because you know because we have we we talk with them all the time. There's a lot of very deep work going on at a lot of brands around this issue. It, it it's really complex, um, and and don't and geopolitical concerns right these are global supply chains right now there's a lot going on in the world as we know so that's also on the minds of 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 the brands and the manufacturing base as well so it, it's hugely complex there's a lot of us we need to we need to be transparent with each other and be and have sustainability as the stakeholder is what i like to say let's be true to sustainability as a, as our driving force um yeah I'll tell you, one last thing, and, I'll, and then we'll, we'll kind of get to some cl- closing comments. But um, so, you know, I mentioned the the product finder, you know, tool that's on the TCO website. So, I mean, look at that, guys, because my, my guys and gals, because my my vision of the of the future, you know, is where you know an end user, a customer, gets a product. It has a QR code on it. They scan that QR code. It calls up data similar to that's you know that's in the product finder. But included in that, in that you know, besides when it entered the market, um, might be the repair manual, might be um, where you can get it fixed, might be who the authorized ITEDs are who can take this you know, and put it back into productive use. It'll have the CO2. It'll have uh, when the data was wiped uh, on the drive, when it was put back into productive use, and then finally when it entered the landfill. All this information, the more transparent, the more available it is to the consumer, to the end user, to the guy who uses the stuff, um, the more valuable it's going to become, and, the, and honestly, the, the better it is for our planet. So, you know, I think TCO has taken a really big step in the right direction. Um, I think we need to kind of take all these silos of information, put it together, and share it with the consumer. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And and one one thing I just wanted to add is there's a really important player that is really brands will tell you the same thing: is the resellers, the channel partners for the brands are really not 
very well aware of sustainability and the more sustainable product options that they have. And the resellers are so often the interface with these large enterprises. Yeah. The brands have understood this, and I think there's a fair amount of education going on in the channels um, about what options buyers have. But you know, for those of you who are maybe involved with with resellers or maybe even have uh, you know a ITAM, ITAD. Um, combination offering that's really important you know educate the resellers on sustainability topics um, just just full disclosure we're, we're starting to offer something to resellers where they can have an API that connects them to our product finder so they can list um, products that have our certification on their website and in their e-catalogs um, we find just giving that direct access can can help them um, just offer those more sustainable options to their customers. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that shows the kind of, you know, community member you are, you know, what, what TCO is doing to help the, the, the community. So, you know, thank you for that. That's great. And thank you for being here today. Claire, uh, thanks so much. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. And and by all means, and, and we are a little new to the iPad, iTad space. We're learning, but we you're so important to that, that end user conversation that we have up front. Um, so we want we want good recommendations to give to them. So thank you for educating us and uh, bringing us into the community. Thank, thank, thanks. Well, well, hopefully you'll stick around for the, some of the networking sessions. So we can kind of, we can all get a chance to one on one with you. So sure. I, I, thank you, Cliff. Thanks, everyone. Uh, just some, some uh, quick closing comments. Um, uh, first of all, uh, when, when I finish these comments, uh, we're going to uh, you'll see the networking link on your on your portal light up, uh, feel free to click on it. You'll get one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, sessions with everybody. Um, and uh, where are we? oh, oh, the other thing, the expo. We have, the, we, if you click on the, there's another link up there for expo. We have some really good content that's gonna be open uh, through uh, past midnight, your time, European time tonight. So feel free to kind of get uh, into the expo, look at some of that content. It's good stuff that you can share with customers. Um, so take a look at that. Lastly, I want to thank Europe. I want to thank Europe because Europe has really, you know, led the, uh, the way. They led the challenge uh, um, with data protection, with the environmental protection. Uh, but beware, the United States is close behind you. We're moving up very quickly. And then you got places like Australia. Australia also is, is on the cutting uh, edge of some of the sustainability and data protection. Uh, speaking of Australia, we're going to uh, Australia midnight your time. We're going to be live doing the same kind of thing. So if you can't sleep tonight, you know, jump on disposition and and talk to um, Australia. You know, as an industry, we're positioned to impact sustainability. We're positioned to protect customer data. Um, companies like uh, TCO, Blanco, R2, Adisa, um, they're all providing tools to enhance the services that we're providing to our customers who are demanding these things. These things are being required by regulations uh, and, you're, and you're being incented. Uh, governments are throwing money, investors are throwing money at companies that embrace these concepts. Um, so you know, look at it, feel free, talk to ASCDI. We'll, we'll connect you with any one of these partners. Um, if you have questions on how to become an ITIR or how to improve your ITIR, there's guys like uh, Reich Sandlin who talked to us today. I'll put you in touch with Reich if you don't have his contact information. Uh, but most of all, thank you. Thank you to um, the ASCI staff for helping us put this together. Uh, thank you to all the speakers. And most of all, thank you for everybody who joined us today uh, to make this a successful meeting. Uh, again, networking is open now, so click on networking. Um, I look forward to seeing everybody there. See you at midnight tonight if you want to be in Australia. And thank you to our sponsors for making this all possible. All right, I'll see you all in the networking session. Have a good rest of the day.